three, two, one, go. Okay, so morning everyone. I'm just trying to share our slides to start. So, okay, so th thanks everyone for, for joining us today for the open day for the Faculty of Science and Engineering. So what we're going to do today is for the next hour and a half or thereabouts is run through some of the programs that are on offer in the Faculty of Science and Engineering. So to start with, we will have um, just a, an overview of the LM123 program, so that's Biological and Chemical Sciences. So what that is, is it's a, a common entry program. So we have a common first year where students will do a range of different modules across biology, chemistry, maths and physics. And then beyond that, in second, third and fourth year is where the students specialise into one of what we call exit streams. So these are their own independent BSCs that students will end up with at the end of their four years. So these are uh, a BSc in bioscience. And with this, there's also the option in fourth year to move into a BSc in biomedical science. So what you would do in that option is have the common first year in LM123, then do second and third year in bioscience and then do the fourth year in biomedical science. Beyond that, there's the uh, BSc in environmental science. So that's the, the second exit stream here from LM123. We have the BSc in industrial biochemistry and we have the BSc in pharmaceutical and industrial chemistry. So the idea with the session that we have today and I'll show it on the next slide is to um, present these, these programs through the eyes of graduates. So we have different graduates from nearly all of these programs and the ones that we don't have. So for example, we've no graduate today from pharmaceutical and industrial chemistry. We have the course director in the Q&A section at the, the top of your screen where you could just ask any questions that you might have about the, uh, the programs. And um, the next one that I bring us on to then is this LM066. So you'll see that this is also the BSc in environmental science, but there is an additional direct entry route into the BSc in environmental science. OK, so what this direct entry route is, is it brings the person directly into environmental science and the uh, degree that they end up at the end is the same as the one that they would have gotten in the LM123 program, but they have directly chosen to go into environmental science. And again, if, if that um, option is, is more difficult for people to grasp, we can definitely explain that in the uh, questions and answers. We also have the uh, BSc in Equine Science, there's the BSc in Food Science and Health, and then there is the BE, which is uh, Engineering in Chemical and Biochemical Engineering. Okay, so just bringing us on then to the uh, the overview on that. So as I said, this will be through the eyes of graduates. We're more than happy to answer any questions that people have in the the Q and A session. That is, will go out through through on uh, throughout this entire session. So you can just pop in any questions that you may have, specifically of the students or of the programs more broadly. Okay, so what we are actually going to start with today is is the um, BSc in Environmental Science. So that would be through one of the um, graduates, Trisha. We'll also have the various other programs represented, as I said. So we'll have the industrial biochemistry, pharmaceutical and industrial chemistry. We, we don't have a, a graduate, but as we said, we can answer any questions on that program in the Q&A. Um, we also have equine science represented, uh, food science and health, and then the uh, chemical and biochemical engineering as well. OK, so with that, I think we can hand over directly to our uh, first graduate. So that would be uh, Trisha and we can um, have her experience of the BSc in environmental science. So we we'll just have two seconds in the background just while Trisha uh, gets herself ready to present. And as I said, there is the Q&A function where you can ask any questions and they will be answered throughout the session. Okay. I'm just going to stop sharing and hopefully hand over rapidly to Trisha. Um, okay, hi everyone. Can you see my screen by any chance? We can. 
So you can just go into, into presenting mode there, Trisha. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So um, hi everyone, my name is Trisha Andreth and I did the course LM000 um, Environmental Science um, in University of Limerick in 2016 and I just graduated in 2020, so almost two years ago now. And um, my current employment is um, an EHS specialist in Johnson & Johnson Vision Care just down the road from UL. Um, so why did I pick UL? So I've lived in Limerick my entire life and having UL down the road from me um, was so handy that it was just, a, and that UL had such a great selection of course that um, there was like, it was like literally a no brainer that I was going to go there for college. And I loved everything about UL as well. So the people, the atmosphere and my overall experience, um, not only as a student, but also a person that lived in Limerick. So I might be biased um, being from Limerick, but it is a really beautiful place and the experiences that you'll have in college, making new friends and memories will be unforgettable. So um, the course itself, um, when I was picking out my course, I was kind of like a bit if iffy about like what course to go into. So I went um, through the undergraduate prospectus. Um, I remember sitting down on the floor of my room and just flicking through it and being like, what course am I going to do? So um, it just so happened that I landed on the environmental science um, page and I was reading through it and I found it really interesting. So um, I was like, you know what, I'll put it down in my CAO and we'll see how it goes from there. And luckily enough, I ended up getting it and I went into it in 2016 um, or 2017, 2016, yeah. Um, so I liked how broad the course was, that it wasn't just mainly focused on like the biological aspect of it. There were different modules that catered to everyone's interest. Um, my favorite modules were definitely um, safety and industry occupational hygiene, waste management and clean technology. Um, the most interesting modules um, that I found were those ones and they varied in different content uh, from, you know, management of waste, um, protecting employees, how safety culture affected the workplace and to, um, and the use of different technology can affect the environment. So these are all very much applicable in what I do now. So my final year project then was CO2 absorption on solid materials. So here is just the um, kind of introduction of it, but it's really wordy. And basically all it's trying to explain is that um, for this experiment, we use three different amines, which is um, an organic compound that contains nitrogen at different concentrations. Um, and we basically tested to see how um, their absorption and desorption um, capacity for CO2 was. And um, there's constant research around this as it would be um, a great help to our current situation in terms of CO2 levels and global warmings, etc. So um, with the continuous kind of um, research around this, um, hopefully we'll prove uh, successful one day. <laughs> um, so my co-op then, I went to co-op in um, Johnson Johnson Vision Care, so the place that I'm working in now. So I was in the EHS department and during my time there, I was involved in different areas of the site. So every day was different. You know, not one day was the same. You could go in there and plan to do something that entire day, but it'll be different because something will come up and you'll just have to tag along with whoever you were with that day. So everyone um, in my department specialized in different things. So I got great exposure to the different aspects of health and safety and in industry, um, like machine safety, um, environmental monitoring, um, noise monitoring, as we can see there on the slides. So ERT as well. So we got the fire brigade to actually come in and do a walk of the site and they came in with their um, fire trucks. So I got to sit in the driver's seat, which was um, very interesting. And I got to put on a helmet as well from one of the um, firefighters and also construction safety. Um, I got involved in that as well. 
So not only did my co-op um, help with my professional growth, but it also contributed greatly to my personal skills, um, like my soft skills. And I made also good friends during my co-op. So um, this is just a video of the construction side of things when I think they were expanding towards the wind turbine, if you've ever kind of been down that area. So this was when they were expanding it in 2019. Um, so obviously this part is built now and they're just constantly expanding on both sides of the plant. So it's very busy at the minute. Um, but overall, it was a great experience. 11 out of 10, I would recommend it. Um, so what do I do now since graduation? So since graduation, which was almost two years ago, um, I'm back working with um, J and J in the EHS department. So I look over our safety system, which is Curve, and this allows us to track our incidents on site. So any good saves, which prevents um, accidents and incidents or near misses, and our Kappas, which are corrective and print and preventative actions. Um, these are actions that come out of investigation. And I also look after, um, oh, that's our um, EHS um, department, our team, but there's two people missing from it. So that's just us. I think that was recently taken. Um, I also look after any industrial hygiene um, on site, meaning so anything to do with like chemicals, noise, radiation, personal protective equipment and respiratory. Um, equipment. Um, I'm the main point of contact for um, from the EHS department. So I also look after day to day um, management of waste on site since there is a substantial amount of site that uh, waste that's being generated on site. So I'm also the point of contact in EHS for the labs. So we have um, our quality control labs, our chemi chemistry labs and our microbiology labs. So we have those labs for both of our sites. Um, so I am the point of contact in EHS for those. And um, the longer I'm here, that's one of our projects, our shredder. So um, the longer I'm here, the more opportunities come up actually to um, be involved in more projects, I suppose, such as bringing in that shredder for our waste yard and to have a, an opportunity to actually travel to Brussels um in belgium for a training session um for industrial hygiene so that was just us in our room looking for looking at one of the equipments that we use for industrial hygiene monitoring um so it's the same for traveling around ireland as well so i'm fortunate enough to be able to travel around ireland to um, do training sessions as well as conduct um waste audits with uh, one of my colleagues um but yeah, so um, environmental science as a whole, it's a very broad, um, broad course, but also has um, broad career opportunities. So the course itself, you know, you'll get a taste of everything from chemistry to biology to um, safety and in industry, health and safety, um, occupational hygiene and con conservation ecology and um, environmental assessments. So after college, I think um, if you want to specialize in something, co-op will definitely help. And that's one thing about the um, the course as well that I like in UL is that they do placement, which I think really influences what you want to do after college. So obviously you can go into your um, water treatment, work in a waste water treatment plant, um, be an environmental officer, um, work as an EHS specialist in um, industries like uh, pharmaceutical, biologics, um, construction, um, medical devices as well and if you don't think that I suppose office based jobs are for you you can work also in labs as a water uh, quality scientist um, and you can work in waste management um, environmental consultants so um, very broad um, careers uh, very broad course in general but you will definitely find something that you would like to do in the near future so um, Hopefully that helps and um, thank you for listening and any questions? Brilliant, thanks Trisha. Uh, so the, the questions I guess will go in the, the Q&A rather than people jumping in with questions on the microphone. Um, but you've touched on a couple of really important things I think. So particularly the co-op 
So the fact that you um, went directly to your co-op employer afterwards after graduating, I think is a really nice demo of the, the idea of the co-op in some ways. So just, just to put some more um, you know, thoughts on that, you get to work in, in industry for you know, up to eight months. You get hands-on experience. You get to show off as a, a graduate on all of the things that you, you've learned up to that date. So it's a really nice uh, demo of that. So thanks for the, the overview on uh, environmental science. Thank you. Great. So the next speaker we have then is Aaron O'Sullivan. So he's going to be presenting on the uh, industrial biochemistry stream. So Aaron, it's over to you. Okay. Oh, sorry, there we go. Sorry about that. Okay, so can you present your slides again, Aaron, please? Yeah. Yeah. Great. So others. Perfect. Um, right, so my name's Aaron. Um, I'm from Cork originally, um, and I moved up to Limerick um, to go to UL, um, which for a small, like, 17, 18 year old at the time, that had never really been out of Cork. More than a week, that was quite daunting. And I think at the time I was even planning on going to UCC or CIT purely because it just would have been easier. It would have been less already. But I, I actually think now, looking back, and the fact that I'm still in UL now, UL was 100% the best choice. And hopefully after this presentation, I'll be able to show you why that was. Um, yeah, so just to talk as the, about the university as a whole first. Um, so unlike a lot of the university and college campuses around Ireland, which might be broken up around the main city. Um, UL isn't like that. UL is one big campus, one big unified campus. There's a lovely river, river running through the, through the middle of it. It's also not in the main city. It's outside it um, in a little residential area, which makes it like almost like a different community to the rest of the city. Um, there's tons of estates around. Again, that's very, very different. Um, in most places, people stay in apartments. Um, but it's in, here we stay in big, huge estates. Students are a lot closer together. We have villages on campus, and it's a lovely, lovely place to be as well. Um, on top of that, then, I think we have more course or more clubs and societies than any other university on campus, or very close to it at least. Um, so there is something for everybody. If you're into sports, there's 100% going to be a sports club there. If you're into society, I guarantee that you'll be able to find something that you'll love to do, that you'll love to do once a week, kind of break the week up, have something to look forward to. And on top of that, we have a lot of general entry degrees. So science choice being one of them for the biological chemical sciences, and there's an engineering one, and that's also great. Um, so why biochemistry specifically? So if there's any parents listening, um, nine out of the 10 top biopharma companies or top pharma companies in the world have a base in Ireland. Biochemists are highly sought after. And um, there's a lot of flexibility when you go into the, or when you leave this degree as well. It's not just pharmaceutical, which is what a lot of people talk about. It's not just biopharmaceutical. There's waste processing, there's the medical sector, there's food processing, there's biomaterials. So I know people now that have finished this degree and they've continued to stay in college or they work in in a pharmaceutical company or they work in a hospital in the labs there so there's a huge amount of flexibility when you leave this degree you're not stuck down in one path and you also have options during the degree to kind of deviate and kind of change um with the modules that you choose as you go throughout and with your co-op as well that'll also give you that experience um yeah so the degree structure in general so Year one starts off with general biology, chemistry, and maths. Um, generally for semester one or two, I think the biggest question that I get whenever anyone talks to me about biochemistry is, I didn't do biology for leaving cert, or I didn't do chemistry for leaving cert, or, oh, I'm not that great at maths, I'm thinking about doing ordinary level. Am I gonna fall behind? I know you're not. Um, the whole point of semester one, especially um, in year one, when you first start, is to bring everybody up to speed, make sure everybody's on the same level before we get into semester two. And that's when like the college level begins. Um, year two, a bit more specific. So we delve into the workings of the cell. We look at the specific chemistry techniques and knowledge. And then in year three, because this degree is industrial biochemistry, we look at the process side and the industrial side, um, which is the perfect time for it because a lot of people go on their cooperative placements into industry. 
and that's in semester two and into the summer. And in your four, then you specify even a little bit more on your module and then you do your FIP, which is your final year project. And I'll talk about mine later on too. Yeah, so I'm a huge advocate that college should never be just about the college. Um, you shouldn't be picking a college just because of the degree. There's tons of degrees around Ireland and I'm sure ton of, a lot, like loads of them will fit you. But the extracurriculars are also very, very important and the opportunities that you have there for that. And again, getting the degree is very, very important, but there's so much you can do during your four years here as well as just the degree. So just to give an example of myself, um, in year two and year three, I was the department representative for chemical sciences in UL, so that was for all years and postgraduates. It just meant that I got to help a little bit with the running of the departments, a little bit with the university as well. I got to see how things were run. It's a fantastic experience and it's something on my CV now still. Um, throughout my four years, as I mentioned there before, there's tons of clubs and societies in UL. I joined a load of them in first year and the one that I really wanted to stick with then was Trampoline Gymnastics, which is the most random club I think you can join when you come to college. I don't think my mother expected me to do industrial biochemistry and then come home two weeks later and say I'm doing trampoline gymnastics. But it was fantastic. Um, by the end of my first year, I had been sent to Dublin to become a coach. Um, I think in my second year then I became a treasurer and I stayed a member then through the four years and I'm still a member today. Um, probably one of the biggest reasons I'm in the role I'm in at the moment, uh, the reason I'm doing a PhD at the moment is because of the summer internship that I would have done in the bio labs in UL. Um, so during the summer, you don't have college. Um, the summer's kind of to yourself, you can work, you can travel. And I said I was going to work on campus and I got some research experience in the bio labs. And again, it's probably a big reason why I have the role that I have at the moment. And I gave me a big leg up there. And then in my final year, I was in Pfizer's. Uh, or after my final year. Yeah, um, so as a few of them have mentioned before now, co-op is the workplace that, you, that you'll do um, during the third year of your, of your degree. So after you finish your first semester, then you will be doing second semester and for the second semester in the summer, you'll go on work placement. So I went to Regeneron. Um, yeah, Regeneron is a huge employer for, for biochemists, for bioscience students, for pharmaceutical industrial chemists, and for so many other degrees as well. Um, there's so, like Because it's such a big company, they have so many departments, there's just a wide array of experience that everybody can get, no matter what your degree is. Um, and when you are going for co-op, then again, I think I was quite nervous about co-op when I was going for it because I thought, oh, I'm going to have to organize everything myself. I'm going to have to find the companies. I don't even know the name of any companies that I should apply for. But UL help, UL help you through this entire process if you want to stay in Ireland. If you want to go abroad, like they'll facilitate you so much support. Um, yeah, and just to talk about my final year project, so that's the project that you'll do during the final year of your degree. Um, and in generally, it's really something that you're not, you probably don't have a huge amount of experience in or a huge amount of knowledge behind, but that's kind of what it's about. It's about teaching yourself, it's about learning for yourself, um, it's about designing your project, it's about getting the lab work done, it's about bringing your results together. Just to explain a little bit about what my one is, as you can tell by the little, if they're up in the corner, it was about concussion. Um, so this is like a little barrier in your brain. So this little orange thing here is one type of cell. This yellow one is another one. So what I did is in the lab, I tried to recreate this. So you can see in the right little purple well, that simulates like the two different cells on top of each other. And that then we just damage those cells like they would be damaged during a concussion we use different ways to damage them and then we just um we watch them then to see what kind of response the cells have and that's how we kind of learn about concussion a little bit more and my current position now at the moment is i'm doing a phd here in the university um the title of it there i won't even read it out because i don't think anybody anybody will understand it and to be fair when i applied for this position after four years of college i still didn't fully understand it even the title of the degree but again like your fip you learn as you go i've been in this position for a year now and i think i'm in a very good place with it um yeah Luis petrella is the course director for industrial biochemistry and he's also my supervisor um for this phd just that we knew each other um during the degree and that's why i got kept on maybe um, again, being the department rep, I, I was in uh, close communication with Louise and we got to know each other. I did well with a degree and here I am. Um, yeah, and just to explain a little bit, I won't go into the specifics of, of my project, but just to explain with the PhD, a PhD day to day for, for a scientist, you're in the lab quite often, you're doing experiments quite often, you're trying to correlate results. 
um, you're trying to put papers together, just different types of papers you can you can do. Um, at one point during my during my PhD, I'll be going on an industrial placement as well. So I'll be going on on a work placement and that's three months. And again, just like a co-op, it gives you industry context. It means you're not finishing your degree and you don't know where to apply for a job. You don't know the industry. You don't know what you'd like there. And that's the whole point of co-op. It gives you people to talk to, people to meet, people that have worked in other places and you can talk to them and see if you might like one more. And yeah, so hopefully it gave you a very good picture of why I decided to pick UL and why I liked it so much. I decided to stay here for another four years after I finished my first degree. Um, yeah, any of my, all my contact information is down the bottom left. If anybody wanted to contact me or if you have any questions, you can throw it in today. And I'll be happy to answer them. Super, thanks Aaron. Um, so there's lots of kicking off points, even just small things that I'd like to flag. The, the trampolining side of your uh, activities is interesting. Usually when, how I know the students are back on campus is when I see the trampolines are out in the main courtyard. That, yeah, yeah that's, how I, that's how I actually found out about the, the club. I don't think anybody would else, anyone else would look at trampoline gymnastics and, and decide to do it without seeing it in person first. Exactly, no, but it's, it's one thing you can't miss when people are back. Um, the co-op, you, you touched on a really good point there with the co-op, that um, obviously there's a co-op office in UL who organised the co-op. So when Tricia and yourself were talking about the, the positions that you had, it's not like you had to go in and organise those yourselves. You know, there, there's a, a list of really high quality companies that UL work with over the years, so th those are well-established links. Um, the summer, summer internship and the whole research angle as well is, is a nice uh, link in that all of the, the lectures that are on the, the different courses that students will work on, they're all research active um, as well. So what we try and do is we try and bring our own research into the uh, subjects that we're teaching. So for example, my uh, teaching is in things like inorganic chemistry and I try and bring in some examples from my own research to really show the kind of cutting edge advances that have been made in uh, different areas. So thanks, Aaron. That was a really nice uh, presentation on the, the biochemistry side of things. Um, just to flag to the, the audience as well, so please feel free to ask any questions that you might have. As I said, we have the graduate side and we also have the lecturer side in the uh, Q&A here. So if you have a question for any of the graduates in terms of what it's actually like to be a graduate day to day, um, or you have something on the requirements of, of getting into a program, or I haven't done this before, but I'd like to join a program, we can cover the whole range of those questions today. So please feel free, don't feel that any question is, uh, is ever stupid. I think I always say to students, there's no stupid questions, there's only stupid answers. So feel free to ask any questions that you, you might have. Um, the next speaker we have then is, is a bonus one, so it wasn't initially on the, on the program, so Alice is here. Uh, and she will talk about the BSc in Pharmaceutical and Industrial Chemistry. So, Alice, it's all yours. Perfect. Thanks, Millie and Hugh. Um, I'll start off by saying uh, my name is Alice, and like Hugh has mentioned, I did Pharmaceutical and Industrial Chemistry, and I'm currently now a PhD student at the Bernal Institute in the University of Limerick, and I'm working in Pharmaceutical Processing. And I'm also from Limerick, so I went to primary school in St. Nessens National School and I went to secondary school in Crescent College Comprehensive SJ. So the reason why I chose UL, first of all, was down to initially I was very familiar with the sports facilities, being from Limerick and having lots of trainings over there and everything. So knew they were second to none over in UL. The sports facilities are great. And as you're hearing today, there is such a wide variety of science courses in UL. So I had heard of that through my brother as well, who was who also studied in UL. And then I also learned about the co-op and Aaron has talked a bit about the co-op as well, that you go on third year placement and it's a great opportunity to learn about the working world and get some work experience in before you even get your degree. And I knew there was a chance for travel there as well. Um, so I did my co-op abroad. I went to Malta and I'll talk about that a bit more later on in the presentation. So to talk a bit about the course, first of all, um, it's mainly chemistry. So I went in choosing it because I loved chemistry, maths and physics in school, 
but I won't frighten you, it only touches on maths and physics, um, but it dives more into chemistry and all the different branches that you're probably not even aware of at leaving cert level, that what's organic chemistry, what's inorganic, what's analytical and what's physical, but they're kind of broken up and you just dive down into each area um, within the course. And then as part of it, um, it's already been mentioned about the final year project. In your final year, you're working in the lab on this project. So my one was developing 3D silicone scaffolds with the potential for in vitro drug testing applications. So what that basically means, I was constructing these kind of silicone scaffolds that look like those blue sphere, that blue sphere at the bottom of the screen there. And the idea was that cells would embed themselves in these structures that would mimic animal tissue, that then drugs could be tested on these scaffolds as opposed to testing on animals in the lab. So it's a really cool project to be part of, and that really solidified for me that research was the direction I wanted to go in. So before that, then to talk about co-op, um, like I said, I went to Malta. I worked in Medica manufacturing over there. It was fantastic experience, lots of sun and weekends. I felt like a holiday every weekend, but down to the work, I worked as a quality management assistant and that was in the quality management department, which is also known as quality assurance. So we were basically looking over the documentation for raw, raw ingredients that come into the plant through the process and then come out as the final products at the end of the process. So it was a great um, kind of experience to get of the overall process of working in a pharmacy plant and even opening our eyes to all the different departments within a pharmaceutical plant which we mightn't get so much of working on the theory in college. So I made lots of friends with my colleagues and uh, there is just so much to do over there. It was a really great experience so I definitely make the most of getting the opportunity of co-op at UL. So my role now, I'm a PhD student, like I said, I'm funded by the Irish Research Council and I'm working in pharmaceutical processing. So I'm currently working on a project towards developing fixed dose drug combinations. So this kind of idea of fixed dose drug combinations start with, you might be familiar with these kind of monitor dosage systems, these um, containers that you might see from an elderly person or someone suffering with a chronic disease, they might take between 10 and 20 tablets a day. So they're kind of suffering with a pill burden. So we're looking at looking at the active ingredient in the tablets and seeing whether we can combine them into one, one tablet or one capsule to reduce the pill burden on patients and enhance the performance of these drugs. So it's a really good project, enjoying it so far, but that's that's just a bit about what I'm doing, but there really is so many different directions you can take after the course. And just to give you a little snippet of what other people from my year anyways have done. Um, Avine similarly is doing a PhD as well, but she's doing it in organic chemistry. Emily is a technical development chemist. Sean is a production chemist. Francisco went on to do a master's in industrial pharmaceutics. Callum went on to do a master's as well, but in your pharmacology. Janice went on to be a product release specialist and Karen a process engineer. So just to give you an idea, once you do this course, there is so many routes you can take afterwards and none of us are doing the same thing. Um, so I think it's nice to see an idea of what doing this course can give you afterwards. There's just endless opportunities. So to give you an idea of different activities you can get involved in outside your course, I'd always encourage people to get involved in different activities that are not just purely going to college for your course, but enjoying the overall experience. So I was on the Johnson & Johnson YSTEM 2D award programme. So YSTEM is Women in Science, Technology, Engineering, Maths, Manufacturing, Design, and it's all about encouraging more women into these subjects. Um, so I went on the programme and my team ended up winning. So I was selected to be an ambassador for the programme and got the opportunity to speak in the US, in France and at different um, different events that they hosted after that in UL as well. So there's definitely endless things to get involved in and I definitely encourage you to do so. So lastly then, um, in UL, it's very easy to make friends and there's lots of ways you can do so. Aaron has touched on the clubs and societies as well, but there's an endless list of them if you even look them up on the website and you'll definitely bump into most of your friends in stables if you go there. So thanks for listening. I can answer any questions in the Q&A and then any specific questions, the course director, uh, Emmett O'Reilly will be in the chat as well. 
Okay, fantastic. Thanks, Alice. Um, your your journey to, to starting the PhD, I think, is, is a really nice demonstration of the strength of the course, and obviously you as a student as well. So the, just to explain with the Irish Research Council, so that's a, a scholarship that you, you've gotten yourself on the back of, you know, the strength of your own results in the course and the project as well. So it, it shows, you know, the, the really nice research that you're trying to attempt and it's a nice demonstration of the course, I think. Um, but also, you know, showing those different roles from your, your friends who, who've only finished up recently, it's not like they're all working in, in a really specific area. There's a really nice broad range of careers as well. Yeah, endless, endless careers. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Alice. And again, just to, to encourage people in the audience, please do feel free to, to ask any questions. Um, we're more than happy to, to answer them. So the, the next graduate we have then is Mary. So Mary, I can hand over to you. You're, you're a graduate of Equine Science and that's from 2018. So again, another pretty recent graduate here. So Mary, yeah, it's all yours. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. OK, perfect. Uh, so hello. Uh, so oh, go back. Um, so my name is uh, Mary Maxfield and I was a graduate from the Bachelor's of Science in Equine Science uh, course at UL um, back in 2018. So I started in 2014 and then upon graduating, I became a laboratory technician um, in, uh, in the Irish Equine Centre in NACE. And uh, I decided then to leave my uh, post there and uh, continue studying. And I am now undertaking my master's degree in animal science at Wageningen University in the Netherlands. So just to uh, fill some people in on about what we do in the Bachelor's of Science in Equine Science. Um, so you do an array of courses and I think this is an amazing opportunity for students to have different graduate opportunities after they finish because of the different uh, courses that we do uh, throughout your four years. So in the first, um, throughout the four years, you'll do general science based subjects. So biology, chemistry, biochemistry, and microbiology, but you'll also do other courses as well, which are like equine science based courses. So you'll like study um, equine reproduction, equine breeding genetics um, and also nutrition and health and disease, which is the, the two courses I favour the most. Um, but during your first two years, you'll do a certain number of business courses as well as equitation. And this is because it sets you up for uh, your third year where you will pick your specialisation. So everyone was different and some people preferred business. Um, so they did things like economics, marketing, management, and I think even in their fourth year, they had an opportunity to learn a language. And then if you wanted to do equitation, then you got to study um, uh, some courses like the young horse. So here that we got to actually sell a horse and prep a horse for the Newbridge sales, which is a very unique experience and not many students will get to say that they had the opportunity to do it. Um, we also did things like training and managing the performance horse and also about learning um, about the rider development um, themselves. So as you can see, this uh, is a load of different courses. And um, from my graduate friends, um, some people have got um, jobs in laboratories some people are teaching um, like students to ride horses or even coaching and I also know some people who work for um, uh, betting businesses or even like in the uh, in, in the side of reproduction etc so there's many opportunities after you graduate so why would you choose UL and why I choose, chose UL more especially is that if you have a love of horses, um, the Bachelor of Science in Equine Science is a great course for you because it's all about horses. Um, also it has, um, as I showed before, different courses in, in science, equitation and business. So it gives you different opportunities um, after you graduate, which is a bonus. Um, but the main reason why I chose UL was the eight month cooperative education placement. So many of the other um, students have talked about um, this in the past presentations but um, basically when we went into our third year uh, you could have a list from the co-op office and they would give you their recommended or the their most popular ones that they had and you could pick those but um, for me it wasn't the case I wanted to do a cooperative education placement in research and I will talk about that later 
Um, but um, in terms of um, the research opportunities, if, if you are a research based student and you are more interested in um, answering the current questions within the equine industry, um, you will offer different things like uh, summer research bursaries and that allows you to um, develop your research skills. So I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. So in 2016, so my second year, I undertook a summer research bursary in the Department of Life Sciences. So here I was assessing chewing and behavioural changes in horses uh, when fed different concentration um, concentrations of fibre in the diet in the form of chaff. Uh, it might seem a bit uh, complicated, but uh, if you look on the right, um, so these were one of the horses I used, and I fit a, ch a chewing meter, and that allowed me to assess um, chewing behaviour during the mealtime. But I also got to use this thing called uh, the behavioural observer, which is like the phone-like object you see on the right, and that allowed me to um, assess the behaviour as well while they were eating. So it was a really interesting project, and I decided to continue it and finish it for my final your project, which is the project you'll do in your fourth year um, as an equine student. But uh, as I said before about the cooperative uh, education placement, I wanted to do something in the lines of research because that's where I really wanted to focus my career in. Um, and I thought it would set up my career quite nicely. So uh, I sought out my own co-op, uh, which was very difficult, but very rewarding at the same time. So um, it does pay off. <laughs> so I got accepted um, at uh, UTAD in Villarreal, Portugal. So it's the university there. And I became a nutrition uh, research intern. Um, so I met with two um, brilliant supervisors and they helped me uh, develop two projects and we carried them out over the course of eight months. So I was measuring intake in horses. So we used different indigestible markers that you could uh, extract from feces. And we also measured the stable behaviours over a 24 hour period just to see the effects of the diets that we had. So it didn't only allow me to develop um, uh, skills in how to design an experiment and how to independently carry that out, but also they taught me how to write um, articles up in the, uh, in the form of, um, sorry, papers up in the form of uh, scientific articles for publication. And that really benefits me currently to date. So it does um, have long term advantages doing these kind of um, cooperative education placements. But uh, after I graduated, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted to do um, so or, or how I was going to go about doing it. So I took a uh, microbiology laboratory technician placement at the equine, Irish Equine Centre in Nace. And here I got to use all my knowledge that I learned from UL. So, for example, I took my skills for microbiology, health and disease. Um, we did a lot of lab based um, practicals. So you do get to learn things like how to use a microscope or how to streak an acre plate. And that's really important because then you can drag on those skills and it makes you um, that you have an advantage over your fellow competitors when you're trying to get a job. Um, so here I learned different laboratory uh, techniques and I also then managed to get uh, work experience in an ISO accredited lab, um, which then will stand um, on your CV around the world um, when you go to look for future jobs. But I decided that uh, after two years there that I really wanted to go and focus on a career in research. So I accepted <clears throat> my um, uh, placement at Wageningen University in the Netherlands. So here in 2020, I started my master's, so it was a taught master, so I do a series of courses as well as research. So I major currently in um, animal nutrition, so I range in different animals, and not only horses now, but like cows, uh, sheep, cats and dogs, uh, and even fish. Uh, but I minor in host microbiome interaction, so I study how uh, mainly nutrition impacts the gut and what impacts that will have on your future health, um, uh, etc. But uh, right now, I'm in my final month uh, of writing up my thesis um, in a very interesting uh, laminitis study. So, um, yeah, so hopefully I'm going to uh, do another thesis in September uh, involving the host microbiome interaction sector. So I have a nice uh, array of uh, 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 knowledge in different topics. But as well, um, interestingly, we're trying to combine now uh, topics and we just got funding to hopefully do a PhD starting in um, 2023 in January um, with uh, Wageningen and Utrecht University. So um, UL set me up for this very, very carefully and, and greatly. Uh, it definitely gave me the skills that I needed to have the career I have today. And um, it was definitely a, an experience that I would recommend other students um, to undertake in the future. 
So thank you very much for listening. Um, if you want to contact me directly, you can have my email. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and I can answer any questions you have. But overall, uh, UL is an amazing university and uh, you should definitely consider it on your CEO applications. And uh, yeah, just enjoy the experience like we all did and you'll have a great time. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. Uh, I have a bit of an echo in the background. So just with the um, your career trajectory or, or your different steps along the way, it's, it's really interesting to hear you say that things you've learned in UL have basically, you know, come to fruition at each of the steps. You know, you, you, even though you graduated quite recently to go work in a lab afterwards and then to do your MSc and think about your PhD afterwards, you know, it, it was kind of UL, I guess, that was the kicking off point for all of that path that, that you've gone on since. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it really set me up and um, there was different opportunities you could you could go into. So uh, I wanted to see exactly where did I where my career was going. And it took me a bit of time. But then when I realized that, yeah, it definitely set me up for the future. Fantastic. Awesome. And, and it's great to see that you found your calling. You know, yeah, exactly. It's it really, really interesting. Thank you. So that's great. Thank you for that. So in the meantime, I think Jack is going to try and, and share slides here. So thanks, Mary. And again, to, to at this stage, maybe badger the audience, please feel free to, to ask any questions that you have, even minor things. Um, and we're more than happy to uh, answer those. So in the meantime, then we can move on to Jack as our next speaker. So Jack, it's over to you. Perfect. Um, so just a quick audio visual check. Can everyone see my slides? Everything going OK? Perfect. Awesome. Um, OK, a lot of excellent presentations today. Hopefully I can live up to it. Um, I'll try my best. Um, so just an introduction. My name is Jack O'Callaghan. I am a 2020 graduate of LM115, the Bachelor's of Engineering in Chemical and Biochemical Engineering. People have talked about co-op quite a lot. I did my uh, internship with Regeneron, with the Optimum Pro Science Investigations team at their IOPS facility in Raheen. Uh, I am currently pursuing a master's bio research in biophysics and I'm soon to start a PhD in molecular bioengineering. Um, so this uh, is obviously different from some of the science courses that are being discussed today. As most people know, there are many, many different branches of engineering. There's mechanical engineering, there's civil engineering, there's electrical engineering. Um, and I think one thing that, that's distinct from chemical engineering is I think not a lot of people know what chemical engineering is. If people think of an electrical engineer, they might think of something like robotics. If people think about civil engineering, they might think about building bridges or construction. But it's not particularly intuitive what chemical engineering actually is. And the most succinct definition that I could find was that it was an engineering discipline that deals with the conversion of raw materials to useful products. So, for example, uh, you could be working in industry uh, as a biochemist and a biochemist could create this recipe for a drug. So we have a series of steps that we follow in the lab to go from one compound to another. Um, so as chemical engineers, what we do is we look at each individual step in the reaction and we convert those into reactors or distillation columns or various unit operations and we string them together to make a process. Um, so chemical engineers are actually more commonly referred to as process engineers because what we actually do is we take these recipes and we scale them up to industry levels. And the reason that's quite important and I suppose one thing I'll kind of reference one, once or twice throughout the presentation is the mRNA vaccines and the vaccine technology that we see today with COVID-19. Um, that would not be possible without chemical engineering because you can make a vaccine at small scale in the lab, but in order to make the number of doses needed to actually permeate the population, you need skills from chemical engineering to do that. So just a quick overview of the chemical and biochemical engineering course. These aren't all the modules. I think like most modules in science and engineering, everyone gets a background in, in mathematics. Everyone gets a background in physics, in chemistry, in biochemistry and biology. Um, but there are some modules that are unique to chemical engineering. So we do engineering mathematics, whereas science based courses tend to do science maths. So there are differences between the two. Engineering maths is, is typically considered a little bit more rigorous. We do some more complicated or more engineering specific or applied aspects of mathematics. Um, but we do have what we call uh, process, process engineering modules. So we have modules in reactor engineering. So how do we actually engineer the reactors to convert from product A to product B in the most efficient way? Uh, we have modules in, in transport phenomena, fluid mechanics and heat transfer. We have modules in process control. So if we want the temperature of the reactor to stay at a particular temperature, how do we actually go about doing that? Uh, we have modules 
where we use state-of-the-art software and modeling to actually create models of our process, not just to better understand it, um, but maybe in the context of process control to actually better get a better control of you know, the concentration or the purity of the product that we're getting out of the end. We do touch a little bit on bioprocessing. So obviously there's the pharmaceutical industry, but there's also the biopharmaceutical industry, which is growing uh, year on year. Um, so biologics uh, is going to be a, a very, very important space over the next couple of years, particularly with COVID as more and more vaccines and more and more bio-inspired therapies come on the market. Um, so bioprocessing has its own unique challenges or its own unique features compared to conventional process engineering. Uh, we also do thermodynamics and what's unique about chemical and biochemical engineering specifically this course is we actually have two capstone projects. So like most people we have a final year research project so for me I was looking at the synthesis and characterization of multi-component drug drug co-crystals um, but essentially some drug compounds are very very large and because because of that they have a hard time getting into the bloodstream that they have a low bioavailability. Um, so with multi-component co-crystals, it's one way of, if, of making the drug more soluble um, and making it easier for the body to access. Um, so I did my research in the crystal engineering labs in the Bernal Institute, which are world-class. Um, and I also had a little bit of experience with publication. I submitted an article to the Engineers Journal and I was lucky enough to be awarded the ILC Dover Journal Article Award. Um, but what's unique to chemical engineering specifically is in addition to a research project which gives you the hands-on research experience that if you wanted to go into academia you have some background on. We also have something called a fine year design project and that's essentially where we are just given the name of a product and we have to make a plant or a process that makes that product from scratch um, and that's a very very unique feature of our course and just to give you some context as well I know of someone who graduated in 2020 in the year that I did uh, went into industry, he did very, very well. I think he graduated like a 3.9 GPA. And one of the first things he did was this. He was given a new product that had just come into the company and he was designing the process to actually make it and turn it into a plant. So this is very, very useful. And it's something that definitely makes you stand out as an applicant, as a chemical engineer. Um, it is quite challenging. There's a lot of issues around teamwork and communication and time management, particularly with all the other courses that are going in the background. Um, but it also allows you to develop a specialized skill set. A lot of people do um, what we call individualized union operations. So someone will focus on a very, very detailed design of, for example, a distillation column, and they will end up touching on topics and skills that you wouldn't normally cover um, in the lectures or, or in the course itself. And that makes you stand out. So just to show you what one of those processes might look like, this is my own flow sheet for my final year project. The bark is worse than the bite. Um, but essentially it's, it's, it's showing all of the various steps to go from a raw material, in this case just sawdust, to all of these different high value products. Um, so that's the kind of thing that we do in chemical engineering. Um, so I suppose why did I pursue chemical engineering specifically? I know myself that in the final year of your of secondary school it can be quite daunting to choose not just the college but the course itself. Um, for the longest time, I actually wanted to be a theoretical physicist, which is worlds away from chemical and biochemical engineering. Um, but in fifth year and sixth year, I was kind of watching the news and I saw the pharmaceutical industry and the biopharmaceutical industry. And one of the things that I was really drawn to was this patient impact. A lot of the, a lot of the value you get in a degree in chemical engineering or in biochemistry is the idea of helping a drug get onto the market and that drug can then go on and help other people. Um, but what also kind of attracted me to, to this course is that I always had an interest in STEM and there's a very, very broad curriculum. We touch on physics, we touch on mathematics and, and chemistry and all these different areas. Um, and because of that, you get a very, very transferable skill set. So just a little bit of a snapshot of what I'm currently pursuing. So um, the area of interest that I'm, I want to specialize in is biological engineering. And biological engineering is essentially the application of engineering principles to problems at the interfaces of biology and medicine. So it goes into really, really cool emerging areas like tissue engineering and protein engineering, developing gene therapies, biotechnology with a senior general in the news with monoclonal antibodies and the antibody cocktails, various biomedicines all centered around this idea called bench to bedside research, which is where we look at the fundamental science underpinning these new technologies. And we look at seeing can we actually create new therapies and technologies that patients can actually use. Um, so that's a snapshot of what I'm, I'm kind of touching on through my PhD. And just to kind of finish up, um, something that I think a lot of people have discussed in their presentations today is that you're not limited 
uh, in choice when you graduate, you're not forced into a conventional industry. Um, and chemical engineers are no difficult or are no different. Um, the skill set that you you gain through this course is very, very transferable. You learn to solve problems. And that means that you don't just have to go into the pharmaceutical industry or the biopharmaceutical industry, companies like Regeneron or GSK or Pfizer. I know of people who are going into renewable energy. I know of people who went into electrical engineering. Um, so the background that you get in mathematics and physics and chemistry, it means that you can really pivot to any area of interest that you, you want once you graduate from this course. Um, so that's something that I think makes chemical engineers very, very employable. And that's why I think makes this course stand out. Um, and as always, I think with, with all the courses in the science engineering, we do have a third year cooperative placement and it does provide essential industry experience that makes your CV stand out. Um, oh, that's a very, very quick overview of chemical biochemical engineering. I hope I could be of some use and if anyone has any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. Super. Th thanks very much, Jack. Again, a really nice overview of the of the course. I, I think the, the design project that you mentioned is a real selling point there as well. So the fact that you mentioned you met a classmate who just really went and did that directly after they, they graduated as well is a really nice demo of that. And as you said, that that flow sheet is definitely it's it's brackets worse than its bite. If you look <laughs> at it and you kind of need to go, what are all those symbols? But you know, there's, there's a build up to that. It's not like students will be thrown in in first year and expected to to right. recognize everything. Yes. Yeah. So thanks. Really, really nice overview. Um, so on the Q&A side, so we've had our first question asked and answered, so I hope that starts an avalanche of questions. So do please feel free to, to ask any questions that you may have um, in the meantime. And our next speaker then is on the bioscience uh, stream. So this is Alana and Alana is going to present here. So I think you're unmuted already, Alana. So if you want to take over, the floor is on yours. Hi there. Um, uh, can you see my slides? We can, yeah. So if you okay. could just go into presenting mode then, that would be perfect. Yeah. Great. Um, okay. Yeah, so if you, I think, yeah, if you press, I think it's F5 on your keyboard, it should go into presenting mode. You just bring it full screen. It's, oh, yeah. Okay, so hi guys, my name is Alana Nash and I'm here to talk to you today about the bioscience course. So I graduated last May and uh, right now I am currently still in UL and I am a research master's student with the, in the Department of Biological Sciences um, with a focus on immunology and cancer. So just a quick, my background. So. Has the slide changed? So yeah, I, I, I think it's probably my fault for asking you to put it into presenter mode, but it, it'll catch up, I guess. Okay, yeah. So, um, oh, there yeah, you go. We have it now, yeah. Yeah, so oh, I went to primary school in Clonlara, and then I am a local, so I went to secondary school in Laurel Hill. Um, and that's where I found my love of science. And um, I was lucky to have really two great science teachers that like really inspired me. I love learning about biology and how the body worked. So that what leads me on to why I chose um, University of Limerick to do bioscience. So I decided to condense my reasons into choosing UL into four little snappy C's, which are course, co-op, campus and clubs. So I think the course would be the main reason that you'd pick almost any course. And I discovered bioscience in 2014. I went to the UL Open Day and I was talking to lecturers from industrial biochemistry and pharmaceutical and industrial chemistry. And I was really interested in these, but I was asking, I was like, which one would be more biology focused? And then they told me about a new course that was gonna come up on the 2015 CAO called Bioscience. Um, which is a mixture of biology, of immunology, genetics and cell molecular biology. And I was just like, yeah, that's the course for me. I was waiting for it to come out on the CAO and I was delighted to choose it. So then co-op as well, everybody's mentioned this in their presentation, but it really is one of the great, great reasons to choose UL. When I was talking to other people, like maybe in like UCD and stuff like that and different courses and coming out of 
your degree with eight months experience in an industry that you want to work in. It's so, so invaluable. I really learned a lot and yeah, I really enjoyed it. And again, the campus, um, I don't know if everyone has been there, but the UL campus is really beautiful. It's really large. There's loads of river walks like along by the Shannon. So like every morning I used to walk in and I used to watch the swans and geese and cormorants and it's a really beautiful campus and it's lovely to be stressed in a nice place. <laughs> And then clubs again, the clubs I grew up in Limerick and I heard for years just how amazing the clubs were in UL from anything from like skydiving to mountain climbing, kayaking, surfing and then all the team sports. And um, so I knew that the student life as well in UL was really, really good and I could grow and really like learn a lot about myself if I chose to go there. So then my course title, again, it's Bachelor of Science in Bioscience. It's an NFQ Level 8 Major Awards Honour Bachelor degree. And I went through the common entry route, which is Biological and Chemical Sciences, LM123. So what I liked about bioscience, so like it really was, it was a variety of modules and then you got a load of hands-on lab experience. And then by the end in fourth year, you look around and you realize that you have this really, really versatile skill set for like almost all of the life science industry. So like some of my favorite modules um, was immunology. Um, I'm still uh, pursuing it, but you get to do uh, dip your toe into like genetics and microbiology and like cancer mechanisms. There's even like a plant physiology module. So you get a really well rounded um, education and it's really varied as well. Like it always kind of there's always something new that is really interesting and good thing. And you really learn great problem solving skills and like teamwork. And um, I really enjoyed the course and the modules. So then for my co-op education, I actually did global co-op. I was, I think, one of the first bioscience students to choose it. So I went to Malta for eight months. It was one of the best experience I had in university, even though it was 2020, kind of arguably one of the toughest years. So I was a trainee quality control analyst for um, Medica Manufacturing Malta. So this was a, com a pharmaceutical company that both made active ingredients and sold to other pharmaceutical companies and finished products. So the actual pharmaceuticals themselves. So in the lab, in the QC lab, um, it's kind of where every you test all the raw materials and the finished products and you make sure that everything is what it says on the tin. So I learned a lot there getting to work in a team of lab, like international people, I mean loads of people. And I just really enjoyed the experience and it looks so great on your CV when you come out and just to get a peek of the pharmaceutical industry, something I was studying for three years and really had almost no idea about. And then I got to go in and you get to see and look around and you understand the routes where you can go. So then when you come back in fourth year, you're like, I'm ready, I can do this. Like, you know where your skills are going to go towards um, is really great. So then my final year project was characterization of the green sea turtle immune response to the chelinoid herpes virus 5 in the disease fibropapillomatosis, which is an absolute mouthful. But basically I was interested in the turtle immune response in a cancerous disease caused by a virus. And I did, I graduated last year in 2021, so I was at home for a lot of it. And I really loved that I was able to do a whole science project from my bedroom with the skills that bioscience had given me. So I was able to look at the immunology side of this question. I was able, I had a good understanding of the virology side of this question, the cancer mechanisms. And so bioscience, the whole course had just I was able to take what I knew and go research more and problem solve and um, yeah, just create a project from my bedroom, which I thought was very exciting. And again, with the Whitney Laboratory in Florida, they were brilliant, um, still working with them now and continuing that um, project on sea turtles. So this is what I'm up to now. So I'm continuing the research with a focus on viral oncogenic immunology, is um, in immunology and cancer and one of my highlights of this year was I received a student speaker award at the sea turtle fibropapillomatosis research symposium in 2021 and yeah 
that's it. So I love the course. Thank you for listening. Brilliant. Thanks very much, Alana. Um, again, a lovely overview of the of the program. I think the fact that you were able to do that project from your home is incredible to be honest and, and speaks to yeah. the knowledge that you were able to get. And again, your your co-op sounds fantastic as well. Yeah, it was brilliant. I really loved it. Fantastic. Great. So again, if, if there's any questions for Alana or even any of our speakers throughout, please feel free to put them into the into the Q&A. So what we're going to do is just because we have a bit of, of time, we have one speaker who's just having a bit of uh, technical difficulties. So just to give us a bit more time, uh, what we're going to do is kind of a, a free form conversation with some of the, the course directors from the, the various programs. So in all of the um, haste to get the program started. I'm not sure that I introduced myself properly. So my name is Hugh Ganey and I am actually the, the course director for LM123. So the, the common entry route that was mentioned at the start, I'm the course director there. And then we have some of the, the course directors for the exit streams are, are on the line as well. So we have Peter Davern is on. Um, and I think Peter may or may not be visible. We also have uh, Elizabeth Ryan is on. So Elizabeth has answered a couple of questions as well. So, what we do is we just have a, a kind of brief chat and if the if the course directors want to mention any specific aspects of the of the course that's that's what they'll do in the next few minutes so peter do you want to, to kick us off yeah sure can you hear me there hugh loud and clear okay thanks good morning folks so my name is peter davin i'm the course leader for environmental science um but maybe before talking any little bit about environmental science maybe just a a few wise words and they're not my wise words they were they were given to me by a, a retired lecturer you know and he used to deliver talks to events like this and what, what he what he used to say was you know uh, he was quite forthright in his uh, uh, his approach he said listen it's as simple as this when you're looking for a course to do three things uh, first of all do you like the subject yeah that's for for starters do you, do you like do you like chemistry? Do you like biology? Do you like environmental science? Do you like engineering? What do you like? Because it's so much easier to to go down and study stuff and then go down in, in, in the work environment then in that area if you have a liking for it. So that's for starters. That was the first thing. And the second thing was, are you any good at it? You know, uh, you don't have to be brilliant at it, but you have to have some sort of an aptitude. Yeah, to have an aptitude for the thing you like. And chances are you may well do. Yeah, but to be just to be focused on those two things. And the last thing he says, can you make a living from it? And to be fair, I mean, you can hopefully you can see from all of the very good presentations there this morning. Um, yeah, you can make a living from any of these programs for sure. Yeah. So the thing is, do you, do you like the subject? Have you an aptitude for it? And can you make a living from it? Three things. Um, uh, and I mean, those that are listening in now, uh, you know, I mean, you'll be pushed and pulled by parents and by teachers and career guidance uh, teach you know and specialists and so on but yeah try try to prepare those three things in mind and also what I'd say to you is you know when you're looking around looking at various uh, third level institution prospectus books and all of this um, you know um, really um, dig in and see what are the different courses about Re read up on them go online and, and contact the course leaders. You know, uh, for each program you look at in any institution, there'll be an email address for somebody and email them and, and arrange to talk to them. That's 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 what the likes of you and myself are paid the big bucks for and Elizabeth there as well, you know? Yeah, they're laughing on mute, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, that do just, just go, it's, it's like going buying a car, yeah? You're going into a showroom and remember all these course leaders are car salespeople. Yeah, and they'll sell you. They'll sell you their car. That's the you know. But you have to want to. You want to buy that car, and it has to be the car for you because you're going to be driving it around for four years. Yeah. So go around there and kick the tires and ask the questions. Yeah. Um, and make an informed choice. That's the thing to take. Take from it. Make an informed choice rather than throwing darts at a dartboard and hoping to hit the, hit the bullseye. Yeah. So I. They, they, they'd be my my. I suppose core comments on, on the whole thing. So I'll hand it back to you there, Hugh, again, maybe just for, uh, I can dip in and out then. Yeah. Absolutely, no, that's, that's fantastic, Peter, I think. And, and definitely, you know, to, to the idea of, of the, the kind of 
one at the end is can you make a living out of the course i mean what you can see is that the areas that all of the graduates are working on whether it's in research or whether it's directly in industry you know there's some fantastic achievements oh, yeah. and i think nearly all of these are still very recent graduates you, know, you, you can look at and we had in a previous event we had a couple of graduates who might have been 20 years down the line that's right. that's and right. some of them are at this stage they're absolute superstars where they've gone on and they've worked in multiple companies and started companies in some in some um, cases as well you know so this really is the kind of launching um, point of your entire career is at the end of the degree it's what you do with it and it has given you all the tools where you're, you're going to, to jump on from there um liz i see your your cameras on i don't know do you want to give your two cents I completely echo everything Peter just said. Um, I think the main thing is go where your interest is. If you're doing something you're interested in, you'll you'll read, you'll work at it and you'll you'll do well. Um, and when you do well, that kind of reinforces this and it makes you work better. <laughs> Keep working. Um, and the other thing is if you do decide to go into any science or engineering course, it gives you a really good grounding and training, but it doesn't narrow your options. Um, I always find it very interesting um, doing these talks. Um, Louis, who's the course director of industrial biochemistry, isn't here today, but we always laugh because I actually did my training in biotechnology and biochemical engineering and I'm leading the bioscience course now because that's the direction my career went in after my PhD. And, and Louis did his undergraduate work in basic bioscience and he's gone into industrial biochemistry. So there is, you know, when you have a science degree or an engineering degree, you can build your career in different directions. Um, biology, as Alana showed you, she did a project about turtle immunology from her bedroom. It's a really international science. There's lots of data there out there, um, collaborations with different institutes around the world. Um, and we can do very exciting things. Um, you know, even as a even as a stu undergraduate student or undergraduates are doing really, really cool and interesting research. So all of these skills you'll bring with you and you'll kind of tailor um, your experience to yourself. Everyone's university experience is different. They participate in different clubs. They um, also take maybe different elective modules or have different co-op experiences and different final year projects. So whichever stream of LM123 you go through, go out, you know, you can kind of tailor it a little bit to where you want to go. So out of the class of say um, 40 or 45, 50 bioscience graduates, each one will be in a very different place um, in two or three years after they graduate. Um, and that will be you know, it's it's. I really enjoy now watching where our graduates go and uh, seeing seeing them conquer the world. <laughs> so that's well, my that's, two cents. <laughs> no, definitely, and I think the the kind of universality or, or the yeah. fact that the science here is the science you know elsewhere and it transfers. It, it's you know that's the thing. Lots of the graduates are mobile. They can get jobs in the US or they can get jobs in Australia or, or wherever you know uh, tickles or fancy is. Um, you know. It's kind of the, the world is the oyster afterwards. Yeah. Um, okay, perfect. So, um, Eilish, do you want to come in? Or is it Eilish? I'm sorry. My yeah, hi, thank you. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, we had a speaker for the BSc in Food Science and Health uh, who's having still continuing to have some technical difficulties. So, unfortunately, she's not able to join and give her presentation this morning. Um, but I suppose to echo I suppose, what has already been said today, the Food Science and Health degree programme uh, begins with a basic um, degree in first year, which, which gives uh, undergraduates uh, an understanding of the basic sciences and then begins to specialise in the area of food science and health, specialised modules in second, third and fourth year. We have a co-op placement in third year. Um, which is the, the longest of the uh, co-op places for a food science uh, programme in Ireland. And it's one of the key selling points that we have. 
and that our graduates um, identify as being uh, an important factor in helping them not only get a good feel for what it's like to go out and work in the food industry, um, but also to often secure uh, employment for them um, when they graduate. Um, as part of the fourth year, there is a research project similar to the other degree programmes that have already been presented this morning, where students get uh, an experience of what it's like to do a, p a piece of uh, research independently. And this can ob obviously, uh, you know, obviously then um, set them up to maybe pursue postgraduate uh, programmes, either um, masters or research PhDs with ourselves or with um, someone else. Um, so again, if, if any student is interested in that, I'm on uh, line to answer any questions about the Food Science and Health degree programme. Um, our graduates are really employable. Um, again, there's a, an international dimension to our programme in that our graduates um, often get employment uh, abroad as well. And because of the third year uh, placement, um, our graduates are, are you know, often uh, you know, in employment by the September after they graduate. Um, because of the links they've made through that co-op placement in third year. So that's it for me, I think. Thanks, Hugh. That's great. And th thanks for representing the, the programme as well. You know, it's, I know it's a really dynamic one and obviously a really important topic in Ireland and, and internationally as well. Um, fantastic. So what we have is we maybe go back out for one more round. I see Peter is, is unmuted. Peter, do you have another? Yeah, uh, yeah, just just to give a sure. I, I suppose I'd, I'd given uh, I suppose general general thoughts, but just maybe to to dial it in on, on the environmental science program, and to say up front a disclaimer: I'm I'm not an environmental scientist. I'm an industrial chemist, um, uh, but as, as course leader for the the program and looking almost from the outside in, uh, I can see you know it's a it's a very rounded program for people who have an interest in in environmental science, and it's probably slightly different from the other programs on offer, third level programs in Ireland, insofar as it um, it tends to gear our graduates, and as, as Trish has seen, as, as described there earlier, you know, for um, to actually to be boots on the ground, doing doing the stuff day in day out, and, and I mean that in a very positive uh, and um, an effective way, you know. Um, students who take the program, and as Trisha said, you know, you're you're kind of underpinned. Uh, uh, with the sciences, biology and chemistry in, in let's say, first and second year principally. And it doesn't mean that you have to be a, a, a brilliant uh, scientist, uh, you know, uh, and uh, in terms of your leaving cert, you know, God, pe people often ask, you know, do, what science subjects do I need? If you have one or other, your grand science, you know, biology or chemistry or, or physics uh, and a bit of maths and, and you can go on the prospectus to see what grades you need. I, I can't think them off the top of my head. But uh, if you have an interest in science, biology and chemistry will um, will be built upon in first and second year. And, and even for those that don't have one or other subject, you have the science learning center and the maths learning center, which are like free grinds. And that, that applies to all the programs here, I guess. Yeah, um, uh, where you you get one to one, um, face to face, uh, I suppose mentoring or tuition or like free grinds. You know, you come out of lectures and you wonder, Jesus, what was that about? You you go and you ask, and you can ask a um, at the science or the maths learning centre. It's, it's a great free facility. So that all helps. And uh, in terms of co-op then, you know, you've, you've built up your, your biology and your chemistry a share and you feed in then a bit of occupational hygiene, industrial hygiene, as Trish was saying, and you get into geographical information systems, all that sort of stuff. Um, and you, you, you go out on co-op and I was just checking, I mean, this year's students, they're all placed, um, which is which is a great thing. You know, uh, um, for for the from January through to the end of August of this year, and that that's standard enough. Uh, you know that most, if not all, get placed promptly and in 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 like Trish in 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 J and J. Um, so um, the last thing I'd say is that just to, to clarify, maybe, and as you as you said at the start, that um, there's two ways into the environmental science program. One is uh, via LM123, which is the common entry where you come in and first your common common entry and you then take the exit route uh, to environmental science from second year onwards. Uh, but there's also the direct entry route, LM066. So you actually start in first year in, in environmental science. Now you, you do essentially the same modules as the common entry, apart from one, which is a, a dedicated environmental science uh, uh, module. Um, <clears throat> but uh, other than that, then you drive on as normal. So, <clears throat> excuse me, just to give you that overview of the program and like like all the other programs, I mean, graduates, they go all over the place. 
you know, it's a key. Literally, when you get your parchment, you know, uh, on graduation, that's like a key to a door. You open that door and off you go. And people go all over the place, you know, industry, uh, uh, academia, research, all over the world as well. You know, you, the, you, you really have a key to a door to, to let you thrive. OK, so I'll leave it at that, you. Thanks. Sorry, no. Peter, um, that's great, Peter. No, okay. it's, it's stuck on, on, on muting there. Um, you've touched again on some really important things. The, the supports that students have, I think, yeah, is very yeah. important. So yeah. it was Jack who really stood out to me in terms of the, the that flow diagram where he had for his his <laughs> process. If you're if you're a leaving star student and you see that, you think, oh my god, I could never in a million years do that. But the whole thing is it's building. So it's from first year you do the basics, you you know, then you specialize out afterwards. So it's it's kind of adding to your your knowledge all the way. And on the the co-op side of things. Um, I mean, what we do is, is as academics, we go out and we visit the students while they're on co-op and we get the, the feedback from the employers and it's usually highly uh, positive. So this, they say, look, how great the students are doing, how well they've settled in, how much they you know, have learned while they're there. And um, so I think we actually have our final speaker, hopefully on the line. So I see I see Rebecca here. So Rebecca, do you want to um, Try and, and share your slides there. Um, we just make sure so everyone just bear with me for two seconds. Rebecca is on a second. This is the beauty of doing things online. So Rebecca, you should be able to unmute now, I think. Hi, can you hear me? We can, loud and clear. Thanks, sorry, it's been a disaster of a morning. <laughs> it's absolutely no problem. To be honest, the fact that it's only one speaker that has had major technical issues is probably a miracle, so um, that's fine. So can you share the slides that you have, Rebecca? And we, we just, we leave you have the last word on, on the session. Yeah, um, I'm having an issue opening up the slides now at the moment because Murphy's Law, if it can happen, it will happen, and it's all gone wrong now. <laughs> But just give me a second now, it's loading. That's fine. And maybe I think Alana, maybe in the background, needs to stop sharing just to allow that. Um, um just I, I, this, this seems to be a bit problematic at the moment, but, um, if you can hear me, I'd just love to maybe kind of start to talk before I can get my slides open, if that's all right, just so we're not kind of waiting here for me to get it together. Is that all right? Sure. So my name is Rhett McManus and I studied food science and health in UL and I um, embarked on that journey in 2016. So I, I'm a 2020 graduate and I actually would have went to, I would have shared a lot of modules with a lot of the previous speakers this morning. So as a lot of them have, uh, well, sorry, I went, I'm actually from Limerick and I went to uh, school in St. Mary's in Corbley and primary school in St. John's, which would be in Gary Owen in Limerick. So I'm I'm from, from the city myself. Um, again, like a lot of people have said, I, um, I wanted to stay in Limerick. So that's primarily why I chose to look at UL. I looked at UL and LIT and I came to the conclusion really that I wanted to study in UL. Now what's interesting is really that when I was in secondary school I believed that I'd do business the, the whole way up to secondary school and in the last the last year I really I had a really good science teacher and he really kind of brought biology to life and I said look I'm going to start to look at some of the biological courses uh, in UL. Uh, sorry guys, can you still hear me? I just want to check in. Sorry, I'm just trying to unmute here. Um, yeah, all right. you can still hear me. Was that all right? Or We can hear you, no problem. We just can't see the, the slides, but your, yeah, your sorry, talk sorry. Is, yeah, is, is very clear, so that's perfect. Okay, good. So I'm just going to continue here while I try to sort out this mess. But uh, yeah, so as I said, I had a really good bio biology teacher um, in St Mary's in Corbally so I looked at the biological courses in UL and my 
kind of I, I looked at the what I could get and a kind of a backup plan if I didn't get what I wanted in my leaving cert because I know it's a very stressful time. So obviously it is based on a points kind of basis. So I put food science down as my first, which would have been 460 points at the time back in 2016. And then I put the second course, which is now I think biological and chemical science. This is that entry path. It was science choice back in back when I was doing my leaving cert. So that's the, that's the second thing that I put on my list. Just so I kind of knew that if I didn't get my points, the points I required for the director entry into that course, then I could go OD of the science courses and which at the time food science was offered um, as a result of doing the entry into the science choice course. But I ended up getting my, my first score into food science and health. Now, a lot of it, well, we'll say the main things that I liked about that course, um, some of the highlights I suppose were that in the first year, like many have said, it was a streamlined kind of sort at the start. So, you know, I didn't do chemistry and leaving cert, and that would have been a worry that I had going into college. However, you are kind of, you're all given the same baseline in first year. So, as I already said, like I did a lot of those kind of uh, biology, chemistry, and physics kind of starter modules with the likes of Aaron and Alice and Trisha that are, are in completely different courses to what, what I was. So I really like that UL kind of gives you that strong foundation no matter what science course that you're actually in. Um, another thing that I liked about the course um, would have been the eight month placement. So, uh, like, I, I, I know I'm a speaker, so I'm kind of I'm mimicking a lot of what the others have said, but UL does offer an eight month placement, which is um, the, the longest extent of a placement offered um, in the country, I think, at the moment for a cooperative education cooperative education and for me it kind of brought the course to life so like when you get into third year you've done five five, five semesters at that stage when you you go into your vacation and you've had a lot of like knowledge um practical and uh, practical and uh, theoretical as well you know your your lab based studies and what you've actually studied on paper it's kind of brought to life and it's maybe taking something that might have been an in you know knowledge in your head and actually getting to apply it in real life which I thought was really beneficial I think I kind of came into my own after doing the co-op and again like others have said you will make it really easy to go into cooperative cooperative education like I knew where I was going to at the end of the second week of third year in first semester I was told where my interview was in the first week coming back and I was had the interview and I found out the same day where I was going to so that kind of put my mind at ease as well you know I had started really quickly thanks to UL and it allowed me to, I actually, I went from Limerick to Cork for my cooperative education. I went to Carberry Group in West Cork. So they manufacture cheese and protein powders. Um, so it gave me that time then to kind of plan, okay, my accommodation and what I was going to do and how I was going to get to Cork, which was great. And when I got there then, I learned a lot. Um, as I think Trisha mentioned, it's not just a kind of an academic um, setting. You You get to benefit a lot from actually seeing what, how it is like to operate an industry um, and you get to build on your kind of personal and professional skills which I thought was fantastic so I actually was working as a cheese R&D intern so you got your research side of it there you know your technical research but you also I also got a practical aspect whereas I was actually in a pilot pilot scale plant making cheese so in the semester beforehand we would have had uh, food processing operations with Dick Fitzgerald which was a very, it's actually what a very beneficial module in the fact that it, it directly talks about what you're going to be doing in industry. And I remember we actually learned about cheese making, which was exactly what I ended up doing. Um, so I went from, you know, taking the milk the whole way through the process to actually making it into cheese. And I found that that was a very beneficial work experience for me because I really get, did get to see how our course directly applies to the industry that we want to go into. Um, and then after I came back, then in my fourth year in college, I uh, completed my FYP, my final year project. And we, uh, the title of ours was, I'm going to just read out the title because I know my slides aren't working and I'm, again, apologetic about that. Um, the effect of enzymatically hydrolyzed brewer's front grain supplementation on the rheological, textural and sensory properties of muffins. So that does sound like a very wordy title, but you know, the last word is muffins. It was a, a very interesting and fun um, final year project to get into. 
So we basically had two um, two different studies, you, you can say we called one muffins, A muffins and the other group B. So one contained hydrolyzed brewer's brent grain and one contained non-hydrolyzed brewer's brent grain. And then we assessed the differences on the rheological, textural and sensory properties. So it was actually really fun. We got to um, hold a sensory tasting. So we made the muffins and and put them out for tasting for various people in the in the college and externally. So we held sessions. I think it was uh, four sessions throughout the period of a week, and it was overall I think fifty two people that we that we got to try them. So we obviously then got them to fill out um, a, a questionnaire, a survey of sorts, and we got to put it on a scale, and then we statistically analysed those results, and that was actually went into our report, and we got to see you know the differences um between the hydrolyzed um particulate and the non-hydrolyzed and the effects it has in confectionery products and what was actually really interesting and i i suppose i never thought i'd see the day but our paper was published in october of 2021 so i think that's that's a, a fun little thing and it also shows you the opportunity that you have doing those projects in ul you know like it's not just a project to keep you busy in your final year that's a project that that's a real research project they really put you into it our supervisor was Dix Fitzgerald and our, uh, we'll say, our postdoc, her name is Maria Camino, and I can't can't speak highly enough of either of them. Uh, they really helped throughout the whole project and you could tell there was a real passion point of what they were doing. And it really just goes to show the, you know, the passion of all of the faculty in the um, science and engineering and also the food science courses, you know, they're giving you these projects because they're teaching you and they're hoping that you're going to become someone like a colleague at some point and not just a student and it really I thought the fact that our paper was published was a real kind of um you know representation of that and then after I left UL so life after UL I as well went back to my cooperative education employer Carberry and I went in um as a graduate so I was an R&D graduate for about just over a year I worked on cheese projects new project development projects and I thought because I'd been there would say previously they knew they knew me they knew what I was like and after a few months I was actually given my own project so I was given I'm not going to say for confidentiality reasons but I was given whatever this concept and they said you have to go and do the technical research you have to present it to the senior commercial and MPD team and then you're going to actually design the experimental um, process for it. so you're going to take this project from start to finish and Kind of come up with a prototype of, of sorts so I'd, i had a lot of fun doing that um at times you know it, it was nerve-wracking and um, presenting to the senior teams but i think the presentation skills that i picked up on my way from ul having to do so many group projects and presentations was it was really um you know it really did stand to me and a lot of the modules that we did in uh, second and third year um geared towards the food industry really really was my my kind of my my core for how I how I um, undertook those projects like one module that stood out in particular was the research trends in food and health that I think it was in third year we did it it was Eilish's module and that that module in itself really helped me doing the technical research because it does involve um, looking at a lot of the trends in the market at the time which really helped when you're um, you know presenting to people like the commercial team um, after that then uh, in September of 2021 I was actually shifted department it was part of the program that I was employed in so I actually went into the utilities department which interestingly enough I was working in water waste treatment so something that you would expect maybe an environmental science to end up in um, because of the scientific background that I had in food science and as I said we all are streamlined in the scientific kind of principles and the fundamentals um, I was allowed to embark upon that job and it also involved um, doing EPA surveys of the site. So if there was any non-conformances in regards to the Environmental Protection Agency's regulations, I'd highlight them and make sure that they were sorted out for the site. So that was really interesting. And just quickly to kind of sum up then my life after UL, um, this is a recent development. I have actually, I got a bit of itchy feet after COVID and I decided I wanted to move to a different employer. So I'm actually working for Regeneron Pharmaceuticals where Aaron O'Sullivan would have done his placement. Um, he mentioned it already. I started there just two weeks ago as an associate biotech production specialist. So again, it really just goes to show that you're not you're not pigeonholed in any of these courses and 
you know, once you know the fundamentals of science, it's not really none of these kind of industries are worlds apart. Like you'd be surprised. I did a lot of um, projects with protein isolates in my food industry job and the fundamentals and the processes in this biological um, operations where I'm working now are really, really similar. So, you know, there there's no real there is no definitive of what your course is, what, like what job you're going to go into. You can go into a variety of jobs and I can't recommend UL um, any, anymore. I think it's great. I think it would be a great, um, great choice for anyone to go, to go into. Okay, thanks very much, Rebecca. Um, and thanks for battling through your, your technical problems on, on your site. Sorry um, about that again. I'm my, so one, <laughs> my one disappointment is that I wasn't able to participate in the muffin tasting study, to be honest. But uh, no, and, and the, uh, you know, all jokes aside, it, it's, you know, that they're nice things to look at, but you've done really important science on that. And as you said, you were able to publish a paper based on that research. You know, that's really impressive. Um, so thanks. And it's really nice that we did get to have you on to have the, the final experience as a, a graduate. And so with that, I think we're about seven minutes ahead of schedule. So thanks to everyone for, for sticking with us on the attendee side. Um, with, with the questions, we only had three questions, but I'm hoping that that's people were just captivated by the, the speakers. You know, the, the quality of graduates that we have directly speaks to the, the programs that were presented today. So they're really um, impactful programs that people can get stuck into. There's lots of really nice outcomes in terms of if you're interested in chemistry, you can go into a variety of the different courses. And there's a course essentially for anyone who has an interest in, in the science or engineering aspect. So with that, I'd just like to thank all of our speakers. I'd also like to thank Marteza, who's the, the producer in the background, uh, keeping it all on the show on the road. And um, hopefully we see all of the attendees in future in UL in one of the, the programs that were presented today. So thanks everyone and we'll see you all again soon.